why do we use liquid liquid extraction we use liquid liquid extraction when separation by distillation is ineffective or very difficult liquid liquid extraction is one of the main alternative to be considered close boiling mixtures or substances that cannot withstand the temperature of distillation even under a vacuum may often be separated from impurities by extraction which utilizes chemical differences instead of vapor pressure differences Separation by liquid-liquid extraction can be defined as the selective removal of one of more components either from a homogeneous liquid mixture or from a solution using a second liquid or solvent which is partially or wholly immiscible with the first. The following terms are used to describe the different streams in liquid liquid extraction system feed this is the solution which to be extracted then we have s for solvent this is the liquid which the feed is contacted then we have a raffinate raffinate is the residual liquid mixture which solute has been removed then we have extract which is the solvent rich product in an extraction process a quantity of feed liquid which is f is mixed with quantity of solvent vessel after which the layers are settled and separated the extract may be lighter or heavier than the raffinate and so it may be shown coming from the top of the equipment in some cases from the bottom in others since feed is a two component system by convention the material to be extracted is commonly referred to as the solute while the other component is generally referred to as the diluent the raffinate stream has the same component as the feed though the proportions are different with the raffinate having a much lower solute concentration which is leaner an ideal unit with perfect extraction will yield a raffinate which has only one component that's being pure diluent the liquid used to strip the solute from the feed is referred as the solvent however Solvent is a general term and should not be confused with the feed solvent or diluent. The solvent after becoming enriched in solute leave the system as the extract. 
Now, let's continue on the description and the assembly of liquid-liquid extraction unit. The following are the assembly and description of the liquid-liquid extraction unit. So, in the unit, we have B1 and B2. This is our feed vessels, which is graduated cylinder with 50 liter capacity. And then we have K1, which is the rotating disc column. So, this is K1. So, this K1 is the packed column with 10 mm stainless steel saddles where the effective height of this column is 2 meter. Okay. Then we also have P1 and P2. So these are dosing pumps and it is a piston pump with up to 42 liter per hour capacity. We have also B3 and B4. These are receiving vessels, which is also graduated cylindrical vessel with 50 liter capacity. And then we have B5 and B6. So B5 and B6 is called pulsation dampers. And the function is to reduce fluctuation of feed flow rates. And inside the column, we have rotating this stirrer. So this can control the speed of the stirrer up to 1000 revolution per minute. Okay, now let's continue with the operating procedures. The following chemicals will be used in the experiment. The chemicals used are acetone as a solute, water as the diluent, and toluene as the solvent. The following are general startup procedure. First step, we have to ensure that all valves are initially closed. We need to ensure that the feed vessel B1 is filled up with pure toluene, which is the solvent, and the feed vessel B2 is filled with the acetone water solution. So this is the feed vessel and this is the solvent vessel. Okay. Next, we need to turn on the main switch at the control panel. Next, we need to open the ventilation line valve, which is HV18, HV19, HV20, HV21, HV11, HV13 and the outlet vessel valve HV02, HV24, HV07, and HV22. Switch on palm 2. This is to allow the acetone water solution, which is the heavy phase, to enter the column and fill to the level of about 100 cm above the solvent inlet. Then stop pump 2. Switch on the pump P1. As the pure toluene, which is the light phase or the solvent, enters the column Carefully watch the interface level which form between the light and heavy faces. 
maintain the interface level at 100 cm above the solvent inlet by adjusting the height of the overflow tube U-tube above. Once the liquid starts to overflow at the top of the column, stop pump 1. Switch on the stirrer at the control panel. Now, the equipment is ready for the experiment. For general shutdown procedures, switch off pump 1 and pump 2. Switch off the stirrer at control panel. Then, you need to open HV12, HV14 and HV16. By opening valve 12, 14 and 16, you can drain all liquid from the equipment to waste tank. Next step is to switch on pump number 2. So when you switch on pump number 2, this is to wash the column until it is clean. Next step is to open valve 16. By opening valve 16, we can drain all liquid from the column to the waste tank. Next step that we can do for the general shutdown procedure is to close valve HV2. Close HV07. HV12. HV14. HV18. HV19, HV22, and HV24. The last step is to turn off the main switch at the control panel. Now, let's do the experiment. This experiment number one is about extraction of acetone from water using toluene. In this experiment, there are two feeds and two outlet flow from the column. The feed flow are solvent, which is toluene like phase, and the feed, which consists of acetone water mixture, which is heavy phase. The outlet is the extract, which is toluene rich phase, and the raffinate is water which is the rich phase. The extract consists of toluene rich phase will be collected at B4 and the raffinate which is water rich phase will be collected at B3. So you can see you can collect your raffinate at the bottom of the column and it will be collected at B3. The objective of this experiment is to operate a liquid-liquid extraction experiment using a rotating disc column. The second objective is to determine the high equivalent theoretical plates or HETP for the column. Now, let's follow the procedures for this particular experiment. First thing that you need to do is to perform the general startup procedures. You need to switch on both pump 1 and pump 2. Allow the both liquid to flow into the collection vessel B3, which is your raffinate, and B4, which is your extract respectively. So this is your raffinate, this is your extract. 
The bottom product contains the water-rich phase, which is raffinate, while the top product consists of toluene-rich phase. So you can see at the bottom part of the column, you can get raffinate. On the top of the column, you're going to get your extract. And this extract is also known as toluene-rich phase. Monitor the interface level. Maintain it about 100 cm above the solvent inlet by adjusting the height of the overflow tube. And this tube is the U-shaped tube. Once the both collection vessel B3 and B4 are filled with samples product, start to collect the sample. Open HV17 to collect the sample of raffinate and open valve HV15 to collect the sample of your extract. So this is HV15. Start the stopwatch and continue to collect the product samples at 2 minutes, 4 minutes, or 6 minutes until the refractive index RI values are constant. So you need to keep taking the samples, check the refractive index until the value of the refractive index are found to be constant. Then you can stop taking the sample. Record the refractive index into the data table, which is Appendix A, and then stop both Palm 1 and Palm P2. Repeat the experiment. Switch on the rotating disc stirrer and set the stirrer speed at 250 revolution per minute. When the experiment is done, perform general shutdown.